and welcome to Bitches of Horror, episode 76. And today we have a last exit special, part two. Yes. And we got some good films today. Yeah. First off, we're going to start with Horsehead. Mm-hmm. It's from 2014 by Romaine Basset from France, but it's in English. Yes. Warning, you are trying to reach reality. Please hang up. But it's filmed in France. Yeah. And it's about a girl whose grandmother died, um, and she's going back home to yeah, her family, which she's not really looking forward to, to her mom and her mom's husband. Yeah. Um, and um, this girl, she practices uh, lucid dreaming a lot, so it's a very dreamy so, film. What's it like to be back in the old home? It's nice. Still studying fantasies with that quack of a boyfriend of yours, darling. Psychophysiology of dreams is not a con, mother. It's a science. When are you going to wake up to reality? It's not in your dreams you'll find the answers you're looking for. It is. And the dream sequences are very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, the surrealism in this film is just, ooh, spectacular. It I is. absolutely love it. It's so beautiful. It's like magnificent. Yeah. Um, just the colors and the things, like all the small details and yeah, the makeup and then the costumes and the blood and yeah, just everything. Yeah, it's just ooh, so beautiful. Yeah, like right from the beginning, like you just you're like launched into this dream world. Yeah, you, know, like, you almost feel like you're lucid dreaming yourself. She seemed obsessed with bizarre visions, bad dreams, I think. She has a bad case of the flu. She's going to have to stay in bed all weekend and take plenty of hot bar. Like, hmm. Almost. I feel so, like I'm dreaming at least. Because it's mean, so surreal. Yeah, I kind of don't feel in, in control. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she wasn't, I mean, she was a little bit in control, but not all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, basically she has a kind of bad relationship with her mother. Yeah. Uh, not not totally bad, but like sh- her mom's a bit of a nag. But bad know. enough to make it kind of like uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, basically the story of it. And um, yeah, other than that, you know, the, the great serialism, I also think that the acting was really it's good. very good. Especially from the lead girl. She yeah. was very beautiful, so I was like just taken by her. I really need something to inhibit her nightmares. I can't bear the fact that my daughter is being so affected by her sleep. I was like, wow. Yeah, I think everyone did a good job though. Yeah, like the mother and the husband was also very good, and the caretaker. Yeah. Um, uh, the doctor was in it for a short film, like kind of a short time. I'm not sure if he was any good, but um, other than that, you know, I, I just yeah, the acting, the SFX was really good. Very good. The horse head character was also very. The story was fantastic. good. Yeah. The story was very good. That's the only thing though. I think that the ending of this film. Um, was kind of anticlimactic in a way because it felt like the f- the dreams were kind of going in a different direction and when it actually came to the finale of what was going on they kind of like let it go if you know what I mean like yes you never got a good closure of that because it was kind of a, like a breaking thing but then it just kind of went away vanished yeah yeah um, not as in like it vanished then it kept on going just like the ending like, just kind of faded uh, and I kind of would have liked a more bang at the end coming from all of this surrealism and all these dreams to get like a sort of conclusion it doesn't have to be like this is the answer yeah. but more like 
like I think that's probably yeah. the reason why because I rewatched this I watched this a couple of years ago and I was like well it was good and then it just felt kind of flat yeah but now I rewatched it and it was a bit better this time actually because I saw some details that I hadn't seen before and yeah yeah definitely you can rewatch this and just yeah. like, see new things all the time yeah that's what I did yeah the the music and the you know, some of the voices like, and the yeah. sound like everything so fitted really well together yeah that's the only thing the ending I think it should mm. have been different uh, um that's like my only thing with the film otherwise I really enjoyed it the, the dreaminess the colors the acting was all very good So for me, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Hmm. I will give this a um, 7 out of 10. Yeah. 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 It's not often I give higher than you. I know. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Okay. Uh, moving on to Capital dos Mortos. It's from 2008 by Drago Bellotti <laughs> from Brazil. And it's a zombie film. Yeah, so it's, it's a kind of typical zombie film, like zombie story. Yes. Yeah. Like a bunch of friends are hanging out and then everyone turns into a zombie. Yeah. They have to run for their lives. So, yeah. It's. <laughs> it's but it is a quite different zombie film because I, I, I was pretty speechless when yeah. I saw this. I um, and not in a good way. No, this film is very, very B, very low budget. Like we know it's low budget. Yeah, but it's not like low budget as in oh well, there's no lot of money, but more like low budget as in not only the money but the acting, the story, the the way it's like filmed, all aspects like everything of the film. is is really low budget, yeah. and it doesn't have the atmosphere, story, or characters to pull it up. And it doesn't. It isn't so bad that, it, that it's funny either. No. It's just pretty bad. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was I was actually surprised. It's been a while since I, I saw a film that I thought that was. I mean, I hate a lot of films. <laughs> But this, it just felt. It was hard to watch. Yeah, I I just felt hard. that. I don't want to you know say this because there probably was a lot of love behind it, but it just felt like people like the people who made this film just made it for the fuck of it. Like, oh, let's make a film, and then they made a film. This wasn't a passion project. I mean, from my point of view. Yeah, well, maybe it was. we don't know, but you know. Yeah. It, and the, like, I think my biggest problem was the characters. Yeah. Like if you felt nothing, they weren't developing, they were just just they were just, just people. You yeah. know, it's like, well can they die? There were and too many and there was no one that was like standing out like yeah. special or having a special mission or motivation or like you weren't rooting for anyone. No. Boring um, boring. Yeah and the story got a bit boring. It, it, after a while, you were like, but there was no early story. That, probably that's yeah. why. It's just like, and even if okay, there's no story, right? Then you want gore, right? Yeah. That, you know, Let's go just, in for the gore, for the kills. kills. Yeah. And, and then it's like, there's nothing. nothing. People are like, oh yeah, Brazilian gore. And I watched. I was like, where the yeah. fuck is the gore? There's no gore. I want to see head dripping off. I want to see. The only thing that I saw that I really liked was the um, the intestines. Oh yeah, yeah. That was good. That was a good moment. Yeah. That was like, the moment. But like, other than that, I didn't see any like standout gore moments or any gore moments like no no eyes popping out no like and the biting blood flesh weird. off yeah it was black it was, it was black it was like black was but like, was there an explanation to why it was black like, I mean sometimes you know you have green blood but it's because there's always an explanation but it wasn't even like the zombies that had black blood but that's why the, the, like, the humans did uh, yeah just yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I really wanted to like it. Me too. Like, I, 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 I really second, wanted to. This is the second Brazilian film I've seen, and it's also the second bad one that I've seen. 
um, and you know I've heard of all these good Brazilian gore films and I just I just really want to see a good Brazilian so gore if film. you have one or you, you know of one please comment yeah. I'm yeah. sorry to be so harsh but yeah you yeah, even do, I you had to be harsh better, yeah. Yeah, and that's bad <laughs> yeah um, if you if you want to do a film don't have a budget make sure you have something to pull the film up if it's a good character there's one good character it pulls it up mm. if you know there's if, some nice kills yeah definitely pulls cool, it up cool kills put it mm. on the SFX yes um, too much guns oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah yeah like if you don't have a budget don't use guns Unless you're really good at After Effects, mm -hmm. it's it's no good. Yeah. Uh, one thing I did like was the metal music. I can't remember what the name of the band was now. Uh, but they were really good. Um, I did like the metal music mm. in this. Uh, so metal music and the one gore scene, <laughs> those were the two good things about this film. Okay, so I guess... And maybe I quite liked the ending. Mm. Like... I, know, I just felt... Mm. Yeah, it was like, eh, but it... Yeah. it I liked... I don't think how I... They, I liked how they chose yeah. to end it. So, two out of ten. Me too. Two out of ten. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I, wanted to, I, I wanted to. Me too, but you know. Uh, next up, we have Visions of Suffering, mm -hmm. director's cut. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from 2006 uh, by Andre Iskanov from Russia. film about yeah <laughs> well it's about demons yeah and who cr like cross between their world and our world to come and find their victim mm. yeah yeah to pull their him into their world yeah it felt like mm. a like a pool of hell yeah which you're being dragged into yeah and i like that struggle yeah yes. we were like in these kind of dreamy weird fantasy worlds and then the real world and you, you really wasn't sure when it, which is which and you're like oh shit and you're like totally feeling the main character and I don't know this is beautiful yeah this film is absolutely beautiful like the intro is yeah, yeah the intro is yes. so good awesome intro off the bat that was the first thing you know, yeah. I wrote down just awesome intro yeah. while it was like, going while I, when I saw this I was like yes this <laughs> would be a great film <laughs> Yeah, the visuals in this are just fantastic. I mean, something that Andre Iskanov is good. He's really good at his visuals. The visual stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, you know, I read a lot about him very recently. Like he's like got like a doctor degree in shit. Oh, cool. and like in, or, so he's in, on in like medical field. Oh, um, and yeah, that was interesting to read because there's a lot of. Um, there's some cool. medical things going on there in, in certain yeah. parts. Yeah, well, that, that's why he probably has yeah. these medical things in his movies. Um, and uh, it's a very dark, disturbing film. Mm -hmm. But just beautiful. It Even is. though it is dark and disturbing, you just feel like... like oh. You're pulled into this world, world this yeah. story, everything. And I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of him lately. It feels like we've talked about and seen quite a few films. Maybe. Well, what was it? Only mm -hmm. Nails, right? Haven't we seen anything more? Maybe just Nails. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But we've talked about him a lot. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I did enjoy the unconventional camera angles. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that he's very experimental and I think he takes a lot of um, 
risks. Not risks, but also risks, yeah. but um, inspiration from mm. uh, Shinetsu Kamoto, who did uh, Tetsuo, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. also from David Lynch's yeah. Eraserhead, and you know, all these old experimental yeah. films. I don't know if it takes a break from Sogoishi, uh, but... But um, Tetsuo, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, but this also feels like like a mix between Eraserhead and Tetsuo. It's just like mm-hmm. Nails. Nails is very similar in style to it is. Visions of Suffering. But I think that Visions of Suffering steps up the game. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. And like, it's always uh, <clears throat> amazing how he mixes all these different ingredients, like the story and with the cinematography and bit like almost kind of different genres and yeah. he mixes them so well together and you're just like wow I can't stop watching <laughs> it's, yeah it's something like he's become known for like his special yeah. style like the Iskanov style one thing that I find <laughs> interesting though is that he always seems to find girls who are willing to like actually do real sex stuff and I'm wondering like does he are know porn stars? porn stars or does he just have friends who just like yeah, I'm up for that. Well, uh, interesting. I'd love, yeah. I'd like to ask him that. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, get, need to get, get in details. touch with him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> need to know how to get these women. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, men. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah but um, yeah, also the sound design, the the music. It's just yeah, and it's amazing how much Andre Iskanov does by himself. Mm-hmm. He, like yeah. you watch the credits, and you're his like, name is like in every everywhere. other thing. Yeah. You're like, wow. I think the only thing he doesn't do is the music, and you know some of the acting, of course, and then some other small things. But he like ed- I think he edits it himself. Mm-hmm. He writes, he writes directs. it, he directs it, and he does a lot of stuff. And this is something where you see passion. Yeah, definitely. His passion is really showing. You feel the passion yeah. in all of his films. Yeah. Uh, and that's you know something I really respect. Whether you like his films or not, you cannot deny his passion for mm-hmm. filmmaking, um, and that's always nice to see. Yeah. Um, sometimes I thought it was a little bit slow, especially during these the camera session. Mm-hmm. That part felt kind of pushed in for no reason. Yeah, but I, I, I didn't it's, didn't, didn't it's bring okay. down the film down, but no. I, it just felt like it it was kind of out of place. Like it, there was a character who was kind of connected to it, but then it just felt like there's a lot of sex mm-hmm. stuff there that wasn't really. Yeah, that that's true. It, it didn't bring the story anywhere. It did. Yeah, it didn't develop in the, it. Yeah. you know, I mean, they were like succubuses, I guess. Yeah. I don't know, but <laughs> it was a bit like I thought a little bit off. Yeah, but other than that, like I, yeah, I was I was surprised because I had some issues with nails, and while I do have some of the same issues, like the acting in Vision of Suffering, some of it, some of the acting, especially from the woman. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's like yeah, that's the only thing. Otherwise, you know, it's uh, great film. It's fantastic. So it. if you ever have a chance to see it. Yeah, it's probably my favorite film from Andre Iskanov. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't seen the original, so I'm not sure how much is okay. different from the director's cut and yeah. the original. Uh, but definitely see the director's cut because mm-hmm. I really loved it. Maybe that was cut in the original. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. No. So your grade. It's a, it's a hard I one. think I know what you're gonna say. It's so between an eight and a nine. I know, um, but I'm gonna give it a nine because it blew me away with the visuals and the mm-hmm. music and the just the madness of it all. So yeah. uh, a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to our last film. Yeah, and what a film! <laughs> uh, Philosophy of a Knife. Mm-hmm. And also Andrei Iskanov from 2008. In Russia. Yes. So what is wow. Philosophy of a Knife about? Well, <laughs> it's a documentary style film about the experiments that, what was it, Unit 731. 731 did 
during the sec- Second World War on yes. their prisoners. Yes, so the Unit 731 is the, the Japanese, uh, Japanese unit who um, they tortured a lot of people and in China and in, in Russia and probably other places too, Korea, and I, I don't yeah. remember where, but mainly China and Russia. Um, and, uh, yeah. It opened my eyes. Yeah, because um, I've heard of seven three units seven three one. I have you know friends of metal bands who have taken the name and whatnot, um, but um, I um, didn't actually know the extent of their brutality. No, me neither. Even though they show a lot of it in it, I've read about it a little bit afterwards, and there, there's, there's more. a lot more. It's like so. Really I mean, bad. knowing that, yeah, you're just like fuck. Yeah, the, the, that's yeah. It's very interesting and educational, and on a whole different level. Yeah, it's not like your typical BBC documentary. No, um, <laughs> which of course is great. I mean, I love BBC documentaries, but, but this, but this is something different uh, even though it's not like 100% true throughout the film you know there's like a story thing going mm-hmm. on there which it may be I don't know it might be taken from documents and stuff but it, it feels like it's put in there for for, for entertainment yeah and drama purposes so. yeah yeah but this film is a bit too long yeah. it's like it, four, it four could, hours and... four hours and 16 minutes but it could have been cut down because there are a lot of parts that really there, there's nothing. Just fucking forest, forest with, shots with fucking snow. That's just being un- shown. Yeah. For like minutes, or yeah. like you're like, well, okay. Yeah. It's like I'm, I'm good with the snow. Just like one shot of the snow, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. They kept putting it back as well. Like, yeah. It was like it was like. It was once. like it's, it's disconnecting. It's just like, sh- will there will there be something here which yeah. I'm not paying attention to or. No. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I missed something, but yeah. it just felt like endless yeah. shots of, of snow. So, I mean, a good, a good 30 minutes could have been just. Yeah, definitely. Cut right there. Um, I do like the acting and again the, the, the experimentalism about yeah, it. The black and white. Yeah. It really worked. Yeah. It made everything just so much more gruesome. Yeah, not and only the black and white, but the. I'm not sure what kind of camera he shot it mm. with, but it was very 30s. For, I mean, 40s, 50s, you know, that sort of uh, yeah. rolling. Exactly. And, yeah. and I also liked how he used, like, uh, he, the f- pace was fast. Like, he fast forward some yeah. shots. And it was so cool that he mixed that in. And also, it's kind of a typical yeah. Iskanov move to do that. <laughs> but it just worked so good with typical everything. Typical Iskanov. Typical, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I um, mean, and some of the experiment scenes like really got to me I was like because some were very they are very long like some yeah. are very outdrawn so you're not like oh I will just see this and then it's gone no They, they go on. Especially, there was one scene with the teeth. Mm, yeah. I was like, oof. Yeah. That, yeah, was, that was a good scene. Yeah. yeah, that was a good scene, but a bit hard. I was like, oof. Yeah. Uh, I do think, though, I was... 
I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed in the gore. There were some scenes that were not as good as others. Um, one of which um, is a back scene. I thought it just looked really weird and just not good. Um, and I, yeah, you know, I, I expect a lot from Andrei Skanov, actually seeing his like other films and stuff. So after watching this, I was like, and, and hearing I kind of, so much about this film in particular. Yeah, I, I was a little bit disappointed with the amount of gore and the level of gore. Uh, some, I wasn't some, disappointed about the amount because I think there was a lot. Was like, there? Yeah, I, I think there there was a lot. Like <laughs> maybe every few minutes or like ten, you you. You got a like experiment gore yeah. scene, and it was long, and you got so one... many different types of. Okay, yeah. Yeah. My, my favorite one was the leg. Uh, th- there were so many. I don't even remember. It's it. towards like... the end. Oh. Um. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was really. That good. was really good. That was perfect. Yeah. Like that was the thing. Like the the, the gore level was so, you know, it was such a big difference. In, in how good it was in some scenes. And there was like this fire mm. scene where they used like, mm. ah, fuck, I don't know, CGI, I don't know what it was, but like put it on top. Um, so it, it looked like flashes of light mm. more than fire. Yeah. And I think that they just should have cut, cut the fire or done something different or looked at another option for fire. Um, but you know that didn't bring down the film per se. I was just no. a little bit disappointed that that people have been like, "Oh yeah, it's the goriest film ever. It's so sick, so disturbing. It is sick. Yeah. It's disturbing." But the gore, it could have been because I uh, when I was young, I, I, I used to go into IMDb and just type in this these gory films and just look at the parents' guide to see how much. And when I looked at this, it was like <laughs> like so much, and I was like, "Whoa." So you were I, little. I, it's like eight years ago. No, it's not ten. Yeah, when I was yeah. still a teenager, and I was like, "Whoa!" Oh well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, so that I wasn't old. a teenager. Yeah. I'm old. yeah, but yeah, so I was expecting so much from this. I was just, "Oh, it's coming!" <laughs> but yeah. yeah, but I think they. It was. I think the documentary part was also inter- interesting. Oh, the yeah, man the, was talking. Yeah. And it was a good balance between showing him and showing the experiments. Yes, and then the stuff in between with all the. Bo- boring forest shots yeah. were yeah that and yeah yeah and there was the different like in the end part it was also very long mm-hmm. when they were like going in there and with the train and just yeah. the walking out yes. though I do like how it ended um, I and also love the story that the entertaining story in it yeah. uh, and the good. characters like when you got to know like towards the end yeah, certain characters. You get, you yeah, get yeah, definitely. Yeah. The, the main Japanese guy, mm-hmm. um, his character was very interesting. And the woman. Yeah. Who was, yeah. Those, the, they're, they're, well, that's like the story, though. Mm-hmm. There are two. Um, and that I really liked because they mm-hmm. did it in a very not, you know, bleh way. It was yeah. just, it was good. Yeah, it was a, a ride, and I, it you is know, a... I, before watching it, I was like, I'm going to have to watch this in sessions, like, one to one hour each, but I actually watched it all the way through. Me too, I did it in one go, yeah. and I was like, whoa, and my mom came in, and she was like, what's this? I'm like, well, it's, yeah, it is what it is, just watch, and you're like, no, nah, maybe not. Yeah, but I, yeah, I like this type of thing, because it makes yeah. me want to, to research more mm-hmm. about you know, what's going on in the film. It's Unit 731, okay, what the fuck is that? Check it out, okay? That's the thing also, they didn't put in a lot of stuff. I mean, I can understand why, but they also did a lot of experiments and, and a lot of brutality towards children. Um, uh, which, of course, you know, why you won't put it in there? It's gotta be hard to get children actors and their parents to get into them to it, but um, a lot of the things they that. did and the pictures that they, there are there, the real pictures, yeah. it's horrifying. Um, and that, yeah, I think it's something that they people should learn in, in, mm, in school. Yes. And definitely in Japan, where they don't talk about World War II much, because, you know, they did not good things, and a lot, yeah. I don't know why they don't teach it there. It, it disturbs me a lot that they don't, because they need to learn from their mistakes. Uh, but, yeah, I enjoyed this, and I think That's a lot right. of his medical experience... Um, 
showed. Yeah, it came in handy. So, yeah. yeah, and yeah, I will give this an 8 out of 10. Yeah, me too, 8 out of 10. Oh. I think, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I'm very impressed with Iskanov. Iskanov's films, and I, I definitely want to see more. I yeah, want to see everything. He has a type. You he know? has a type. It's, yeah, it's definitely. Um, I'd like to say early Takashi Miike, not his style of film. I meant more like Takashi Miike, his earlier films. You could always see Takashi Miike in his films, and it's the same thing with Iskanov. Like you don't even have to know it's directed by him. Yeah, you just if you'd see his film, you'd be like, that's it. That's yeah. him, no doubt. Uh, and. Yeah, again, the, with the passion of his films is something that I really, really respect. Yeah. And people need to take a lesson from him because this man knows what he's doing when it comes to passion. Yes. And gore. Yes. And gore. Yes. We love gore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That was a good film. Yes. Thank you for watching our last Exit Entertainment Part 2 episode. If you haven't seen the first part, uh, click on the link. It should be to the side over there. Uh, yeah. And if you like our videos, then please subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yes, and don't forget to stay horrific. Bye. Bye-bye. Good thing. Look at this exit like six. <laughs> no, Kitty. that's for you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And ending.